Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at presentation disclosure and how does IFRS treat deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting as well as the CPA exam for section. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lecture. This topic goes under my intermediate accounting, but I do cover many other courses. On my website, in, ad in addition to the lectures, I do have additional resources such as multiple choice, true, false, PowerPoint, slides, notes, and exercises. If you are studying for your CPA exam, I have 2,000 plus CPA question. It's an excellent supplemental tool for your professional career media. So let's talk about the financial presentation. What should you show on the balance sheet? Well, well on the balance sheet, you should show income taxes payable and income tax re refund receivable if you have any. They are reported as current liability and current assets. If you have income taxes payable, it's always a current liability. Income tax refundable, it's always a current asset because they expect to be realized or paid out within the next 12 months. So that's on the balance sheet. Also, the company should classify the deferred tax account as net non-current amount on the balance sheet. What does that mean? It means you have to net, net means you have to cancel assets versus liabilities. And after you net them all out, the net effect is a non-current amount on the balance sheet. Please note, it's a non-current. We no longer have current deferred tax asset and current deferred tax liability. It's all non-current. Let me show you an example. Let's assume we end up with the following. We end up with a deferred tax asset of 42,000 due to rent collected in advance, uh, 214,000 deferred tax liability because of the depreciation method used, 45,000 of liability because the recognition of income on the installment sales method and warranty liability created a deferred tax asset. What we do is we add them all up. The deferred tax asset is 54,000. The deferred tax liability is 259. Guess what? We net them out. We net them out. We net them out. Minus 54,000 plus 259 equal to 205. So we have 205,000 of the deferred tax liability and it's always non-current. It used to be it, it used to be where we where we classify them as current and non-current. That's no longer the case. It's always non-current. Also, what do we have to show in the notes? Well, we have to show a company are required to disclose the total of all deferred tax liabilities, the total of all deferred tax, all deferred asset. So you have to show. Uh, the total of all of those and the total valuation allowance in the notes of the financial statements. You also have to show this. In addition to this, you have to show the any change during the year and the total of the valuation allowance. So if you increase or decrease your valuation, you have to show this. Also, the type of the temporary differences or carry forward that give rise to significant portion of the deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability. So you have to tell us what are those temporary differences or carry forward, okay, that, that resulted in the deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability. As users, we are interested in this. We want to know how are you creating this. Also, you are required to report income taxes, uh, uh, income before income taxes. So notice PepsiCo here, they have to show income before income taxes, then their income, their income taxes. So you have to show this. Also, you have to know that GAAP uses or fast we believe in the asset liability method. Okay, sometimes it's referred to as the liability approach in case you are asked about this. This is the most consistent method for accounting for income taxes. And what is the asset liability method? Just basically, we're going to look at certain principle of it. A current tax liability or asset is recognized for the estimated taxes uh, or refundable on the tax return of the current year. So what's going to happen is we looked at the liability and the asset. What does that mean, really? If you really think about it, you, you, you're either going to have a revenue or an expense, a difference in revenues or expense. But the revenues and the expense, they're coming either from account receivable, so for example, it's account receivable, credit revenue, or a liability will be, uh, let's assume uh, um, you have an expense, you debit an expense, like a warranty, and you credit an estimated liability. So notice you are looking from the asset and liability perspective. So you're looking at the differences between the book value of the asset on the for tax purposes and the book value of the asset for financial accounting purposes. So you are using the asset liability approach, asset liability approach. So rather than looking at the revenues and expenses, you are looking from from 
uh, from the perspective of asset liability. Okay, uh, the third asset liability or asset is recognized for the estimated future tax effect attributable to temporary differences and carry forward. So you're always looking at the difference in the assets. The measurement of the current and deferred tax liability and asset is based on the provision of the enacted tax law. Remember, GAAP, we use the enacted tax law. So when you're computing your future DTA, deferred tax asset and deferred tax liability, make sure if you are giving the future rate, use the enacted future rate. If they say the projected, not the projected, you have to look at the enacted. Enacted means the law has passed and it's final. Okay, so the effect of future changes in tax law or, or rates are not anticipated. If they say it's the anticipated rate, you don't use the anticipated rate. Okay, you don't guess. You don't try to to, to kind of estimate what the tax rate would be. It's what's the enacted, enacted into law. The measurement of deferred tax asset is reduced if necessary by the amount of any tax benefit that based on the available evidence are not expected to be realized. We talked about this, you need a valuation account. So this is basically a summary of the main points that we went over. Uh, differences between similarities, uh, differences and similarities between GAAP and IFRS. Similarities, similar to GAAP, IFRS uses the asset liability approach for recording deferred taxes. Also, the classification of deferred tax asset is always non-current. So they would always use a non-current. They have, they don't have a current. Actually, they have, uh, the IFRS, they were before GAAP, they used this method, but now they, they both use the method. A few differences uh, under IFRS, an affirmative judgment approach is used by which a deferred tax asset is recognized up to the amount that's probable to be realized. So under IFRS, they use what's called affirmative judgment approach. Okay, in other words, they will they will estimate, okay, uh, by which the deferred tax is recognized. So they, they will estimate how much it's going to be. GAP uses something called impairment approach. In this approach, the deferred asset is recognized, the deferred tax asset is recognized in full, then it's reduced by evaluation account. And we saw this earlier. Under GAP, I, what we did is we debited deferred tax asset, we credited income tax expense, then we went ahead and we debited the uh, income tax expense and we credited the allowance. That's what we did in the prior session. So notice, we put the deferred tax asset on the books, then we removed it. Um, what the IRS, what the IFRS do, they only kind of, they, they make one entry estimating how much it's gonna be realized. But we do basically two entries. Uh, other differences, IFRS uses enacted tax rate or substantially enacted. So under IFRS, they could either use the enacted tax rate or they can substantially enact a tax rate. What's substantially? It means virtually certain. It's mean they think the, the Congress or the uh, the legal authority, they're gonna change the law, therefore they can use the new rate based on the projection. Not acceptable for GAP. GAP, you only have to use, you have to use the enacted, the one that's already did pass by law. Um, other, um, other uh, differences, the tax effect related to certain items are reported in equity under IFRS. So there are certain differences, um, they are reported in equity, not for GAAP. For GAAP, all the differences, permanent or temporary, it's all reported in income. For IFRS, know that certain items, they could be reported in equity. GAAP require companies to assess the likelihood of uncertain tax position being sustainable upon audit. So basically what happens sometime, we file our income tax return, then we then since since we're not sure sometime about the rules, we might have to make an estimate that we might be responsible for more taxes, okay? So for GAAP, potential liabilities must be accrued and disclosed if the position is more likely than not to be disallowed. So what we do is we file our taxes and we think, well, there's a good chance the IRS might re reject this, this the way we treated this transaction, therefore we create a potential liability. Under IFRS, all potential liabilities must be recognized. With respect to measurement, IFRS uses the expected value approach to measure the tax liability. I IFRS use something called the expected value approach. We use more likely than not, just the way they, they, come, with the, they come up with the figures. Also, IFRS allows the netting of deferred tax asset and liabilities only if they occur, if the account related to the same tax and authority and entity has the legal right to offset taxes. Simply put, what they're talking about here is under IFRS, you can offset 
assets and liabilities as long as those assets and liabilities are within the same juris jurisdiction, like the same country. Let's take a look at a couple questions deals with IFRS. Which of the following is a true statement regarding the reporting of deferred taxes and financial statements prepared under US GAAP and IFRS? So we're looking for a true statement. Under US GAAP, deferred taxes are classified as current and deferred liabilities classified as non-current. No way. Everything is non-current. Okay? Under IFRS, deferred tax asset and liabilities are netted if they relate to the same taxing authority or jurisdiction, and there's a legal right to offset the amount. Yes, you are allowed to do so under IFRS. Let's just make sure we this is the right answer. Under IFRS, deferred tax asset can never be netted against deferred tax liability. Watch out for the word never. Yes, they can, as long as they are within the same jurisdiction. Under US GAAP, deferred tax asset and liabilities may only be classified as current. No, they only be classified as non-current, if that's the case. Let's take a look at this question. There's a lot of data. Look at the question first. Assuming Ginger prepared its financial statements in according with IFRS, how should Ginger represent its deferred taxes in December 31st, year two? Financial statement. Okay, so the Ginger operate its business in two international jurisdictions, Greece and Italy, and prepare its tax base and and prepares its taxes based on the tax and authority. Ginger also have the legal right to offset taxes in this jurisdiction. Good. Ginger accounting record of December 31st year to report the following tax asset and liability and their amount. So they have $10,000 deferred tax liability in Italy, deferred tax asset of $25,000 $25, in Greece, and deferred tax liability of $15,000 in Greece. Now, they, are, they already told us then that Whatever jurisdiction they are in, whether it's Italy or Greece, they have uh, they have the legal right to offset the taxes in those jurisdictions. What does that mean? It means they can offset the deferred tax asset and the deferred tax liability, and overall they have a deferred tax asset when you net these two out of ten thousand. So they have a deferred tax asset for Greece for ten thousand, and a deferred tax liability for Italy. For ten thousand, so let's see what answer gives us. This deferred tax asset of twenty five out fifteen thousand out ten thousand deferred tax asset and ten thousand deferred tax liability. This is the answer. Okay. In other words, zero deferred tax asset and zero deferred tax liability. We don't net. We don't net. Let me go back there. We don't net those two. If you have any questions about this this topic, please email me. And again, I would like to invite you to visit my website for additional resources. And I strongly suggest you subscribe and it's an investment in your career. Good luck, study hard, and see you on the other side of success.